Good evening. Not too long ago, about an hour ago, uh, I listened to the president and he gave his comment on the Trayvon Martin case and stuff and things. And he made some good comments that it could have been him 35 years ago. And I believe that probably even sooner than that. You know what I... You know, you, you know and, and sitting here in Dr. King, you know, in my studio, what I've learned something, and I'm not picking on the president, no, none of them, nobody, but we really don't know how to deal with this thing. We, 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 you know, and, and it's the whole country. We, we really don't know how to deal with this George Zimmerman thing. I think that, you know, this thing has, has really done something. We really don't know how to deal with this. I say it because as I listened to the president, and he did, he like everybody else in the country, went into the relationship between law enforcement and the African American community. Well, there should be a relationship, but today the police is off the hook. If you want to say the police on the hook, I hate to even believe that right there because I may need the police, and a lot of times I do. People have went into a thing as if though George Zimmerman was an officer of the law. No, he wasn't. George Zimmerman was not an officer of the law. Uh, he was a uh, neighborhood watch. I say that because who is a neighborhood watch? Is it a record check? Who is a neighborhood watch? What is his real job? I think that let's not go into the many uh, misunderstandings that the police department has had with the African American community. Let's not miss the point. You know, for many years, walking behind and studying the rocketry of uh, NASA sending a rocket to space and things of that nature. Launch time is very important. You have the window to go into space. How's the weather? Many times, I guess me, like the rest of America, the rest of the world, have watched as T-minus, the countdown for the liftoff of the space shuttles at the time, were uh, rescheduled because of the weather, whatever. Russia would be in Kazakhstan, the liftoff of uh, Soyuz capsule going to space. Uh, the liftoff rescheduled because of the weather. Okay. Um, the liftoff of this situation with this Trayvon Martin is off point. The liftoff needs to be rescheduled. What do I mean by that? Well, from the president, from the secretary, from everybody. Attorney General to everybody that don't know what to do here. Well, I'll tell you what to do because I'm going to give you a story. I knew when I first moved to the suburbs years ago, I don't live in the suburbs no more, I went back to the city, there was a guy that called himself Neighborhood Watch. He told me, he had, in fact, he had a little thing on his window called Neighborhood Watch. Oh, that's nice. Watch the neighborhood. I'll go to work at 2 or 3 in the morning and watch the neighborhood. I learned that I had to watch him because he had some game. Yes, he was neighborhood watch and I encourage people to become neighborhood watch. But at the same time, everybody that said they're neighborhood watch are not really neighborhood watch. I remember having an old, old Mercedes at the time and I work on this Mercedes. And this guy, again, was neighborhood watch. And I remember these two black kids that would, you know, go to his house sometime. And when I was outside one day, they were walking towards his house. It was about 12 o'clock in the afternoon or whatever. He'd come home from lunch or whatever, wherever he came from. I'm not going to call his child. They were going to his house. I thought it was quite strange. The reason why I thought it was quite strange was because I knew when his, mother, when his wife got home, 
kids got home. These people, these young people that came to his house. But they would come during lunchtime. There's always time they would come was when just he was home. And I remember one day walking, I was first working on my car in, in the street. And the kids walked by, the young people walked by, I was 18, 19, whatever. I called them kids, young, young people, young men. And they looked at me, very strange, and they were scared as they walked by. Now why would you be scared of me? I'm working on a car. I'm, you know, I got tools in my hand. My car jacked up, parts all over the place. I had a Mercedes turbo diesel at the time, parts all over the place. I'm working on a car, putting springs and trying to make the car new, whatever, you know. And I remember, they were, the kids, look, young people looking at me, and I knew they was up to no good. I know what they were doing. And I remember taking my hand and pointing my finger going towards the other area. And I told the young people, follow my finger, okay? Follow the hand, son. I said to both of them, follow the hand. I had one hand, ball, I said, follow the hand. And they looked at my hand, looked at my finger, pointed, and then run the other way. And, um, this guy that perceived himself at Neighborhood Watch, I had to watch him. Um, when it gets to George Zimmerman, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that's unexplainable about this Neighborhood Watch thing. We really don't know why he was following Trayvon Martin. We really don't have a clue of why he was following Clayvon, uh, uh, Trayvon, sorry, Trayvon Martin. We don't know. We really don't know why he killed Trayvon. Uh, because, you know what I, I, I tell you, if you, you, you can kind of tell, I don't care what color the person is, whether the person is up no good or not. Now, if a kid got Skittles and soda in his hand, he don't have no b and e tubes or whatever. And kids wear hoodies or whatever, I never wore. When I wore a hoodie, I was training, I was boxing, that's the only time I wear a hoodie. Other than that, I have a Russian hat on. That's what I wear. And when the kids were, when, 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 um, when a person is up to no good, you know it. It, 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 it. It's not a, you can tell somebody that's going to do harm. It's very often that you can't tell. You can kind of tell when someone just changed, and that's very rare. I'm not sure people do make a change, but that's kind of rare. Um, so, I don't know about this community watch thing. I think it's an important thing, but I think it's, I think the community watch, if anything, as the president was saying, that we need a better relationship with the police department. Well, I believe that's the, uh, that's what I would give them. We do need a better relationship with the, with the police department. But I also believe that we, uh, this time here, this isn't about the police department. Let's remember one thing, that George Zimmerman is not the police. And I don't know how many times I can say that to get people to see it. Because, you know, sometimes you get, I guess, days, you know, when you talk to somebody, days you, you don't even know whether they're left or right coming. And because we are days, and we take George Zimmerman and literally make a police out, out of him, then that means that it is true, we do need a better relationship with the police department. Because if we, as human beings today, no matter what our color is, and this is across the board, if we can perceive George Zimmerman and the actions that he took as a law and order in any form, then there's something that's not right about us. Because George Zimmerman is not the police. I think that where the mistake happened was with the police when they allowed George Zimmerman to go home that night. Because in that period of allowing him to go home and without any serious questioning, if there was any act of what he had planned for this kid, he was able to get rid of all that evidence. Uh, but I will say this right here, is that I think that that's where we, where we lost, where we lost uh, uh, understanding that.
your cause, if anything that the police done wrong at that point was let allow him to go home that day. Uh, uh, under the stand your ground. The president also mentioned about the stand your ground law. law. And let me say this right here about stand your ground. Well, stand your ground is a good thing. I think it is. But I think we're perceiving it wrong. Now, if you stand your ground and somebody's coming to rob you, okay, fine. But to outright talk about stand your ground, well, you're going to have people that may have a gun and they may instigate some fights. They, you know, here yeah, I'm a big guy, a guy that know he can't deal with me physically, may bump into me. And I say, hey, what you doing? And I put my dukes up, you know, not so much whatever, we're getting the conversation, the argument. He can say, stand your ground and shoot me. And most times it's fatal. So stand your ground is not really a good law because we're not talking about stand your ground when you get robbed. If someone is robbing you and you stand your ground, okay, fine. But this thing here is spinning way out of proportion because stand your ground can be turned into a bully law. You understand me? Because a person can hide behind stand your ground. Well, a lot of people, men in particular, will instigate a fight under stand your ground. Now, a lot of people say, well, where are you going with that, Reverend? Well, Anytime there's a favorite, there's going to be some people that's going to abuse it. I often hear white folks say, um, you can't say nothing today. You know, black people are going to blame us for this. They use a race card, this, that, and other. They, you know, they want a job, they use racing. They use, well, okay. But before um, the Jim Crow law was overturned, there were people of the white community that would use racism as a shield. Everybody used racism, they're, they're going to use any power that they have. If I had a daughter and I'm a basketball player, she's going to use the fact that I'm a basketball player as a shield. Uh, uh, she's going to talk about it. She may go into a restaurant and everything. my father played for the NBA or my father's this, that, nothing. You know, people are going to use things. Uh, if we go back many years ago to the, the, the Scoutberry Boys, uh, where the, those men was accused of raping the white two white women on the train. They weren't. They didn't rape the two white women. They were all of them was hobos. The black guys was hobos, and the white women were hobos. They were hitching a ride, still a ride on the train. But when the train came in, they didn't know to jump off, and they got caught. And the woman said they raped us, and that was it. They just went crazy. The whole country went crazy. It was fought all over the world. But now, I'm saying the same thing here, is that we have to be very careful with these little things that we do because a bully is going to exist. There's a bully that exists also if your family is educated and another family is not. There's a bully also, I, I dated years ago when I used to date the Ivy League girls, so a lot of them were bullies because I'm an educator, but I'm not educated in university, so I'm more jack educated educated. Like I'm a Jack Lade Reverend. I didn't go to school. I'm not connected to any of these other church bodies, so I'm Jack Lade. Uh, they will be even a bully in the church. There's a bully everywhere. And when I was dating with a lot of women, they were bullies because they would always throw up the college. They would throw up Cornell. They would throw up Harvard. They would throw up Yale. They would throw up all these different colleges that they went to. And at the time, I didn't have no experience in college. And I didn't really know what a term paper was. I was very smart, but I didn't have no clue what a term paper was. And I used to, when they all would get together, they would talk about how they all would use stolen term papers to graduate and everything. I didn't know what a term paper was. So that means that I could have graduated because they, as they said, you know, we all graduated from uh, uh, stolen term papers. They, they would say some things, some of them would say those things, you know. And uh, then the way they would use their education, they was a bully. So people are going to be a bully, and no matter what, it, what they do, if a man is laying bricks, and he know he's laying bricks, a lot of times he become a bully because nobody else can lay the bricks, so he will become a bully in that. We all will use that, use different barriers as a bully, so to use that law 
the standing ground law, we've got to be very careful with that law because uh, a lot of people that probably can't physically fight will use the standing your ground law as, as a bully. They, a bully they got a gun and they may bump into a guy my size or they may start a fight and I, I can go back on stand your ground. You understand? What do that mean? It, see, it would be different if they said stand your ground, stand your ground uh, if you got raw. They didn't say that. They just said stand your ground. So two innocent people could bump into each other well, they can get in an argument and another person pull out a gun and say, I'm standing my ground. Bang, shoot, shoot the person. Stand your ground law. So we got to be very careful with this right here. Let me not drift too far. But just to say that um, we're going to have to relook at a lot of things. And I just want to remind the country again and again and again that George Zimmerman is not, was not, uh, can I say have not, <laughs> or who's who, you know. He's not law enforcement. George Zimmerman is not law enforcement. George Zimmerman is a, uh, was a neighborhood watch, watch uh, uh, was under uh, working with what you call neighborhood watch. And as I explained earlier, I knew a neighborhood watch that I had to watch the neighbor. And a lot of people become neighborhood watch because, and they're called police on anything, but because they are doing some dirt themselves. So they may say, okay, I'm neighborhood watch or whatever it is that, and so the police won't look to them. But neighborhood watch has to be reinvestigated. If anything should, if anything should come out of this right here, at this point of challenge, instead of us saying the African American community and the police department need to have a better relationship, which I do believe, but this time here isn't about the African American community and the police department. This time here is about George Zimmerman. Uh, George Z Zimmerman, uh, a non-law enforcement person, uh, a private citizen that chose or was elected or whatever to be community watch, uh, took a life. That's what this is about. This isn't about the police and the African American community, no. This here is about George Zimmerman, who chose to be or was elected as Community Watch. Another thing about Community Watch and the police, I think police probably need to have a, 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 some kind of a, a relationship to Community Watch person, uh, some kind of training, because do Community Watch, do we have a uniform? Is, do his car have a bright light? Uh, do, you know, how much training do the community watch person get from the police department? Is he, is he labeled in the police department in that jurisdiction as community watch? There's a lot of things that are going to have to be in play. I'll leave you with this here because the country need to really start talking. In 19, 2005, I visited Daytona, Florida with my motorcycle. Spirit led me out of Daytona and told me that just leave. I got there, I was sleeping in the hotel, caught a flat going down there in Maryland, uh, and sleeping overnight, sleeping in the hotel twice, and finally arrived to the state of Florida with my motorcycle. And the Spirit told me to get out of Daytona. I was on that main street, the Spirit told me to get out of the it. So I left. I went to see my brother in Orlando, which I stayed there three hours, three to four hours, and got up to go to Georgia. Well, as I was driving up, uh, 75, Highway 75, uh, I was at high speed at the time, won't call the speed, and the Florida police got behind me. And the light on the Florida, Florida police car was blue. Well, I'm from up north. I'm not used to no blue light. A blue light here is more like, um, let me say, like a, you know, like a, a tow truck type thing. You know, in the airport, some blue lights or whatever, whatever, you know. And we really not trained to surrender to blue lights. So the guy was behind me, he had the blue light on. So I moved over and I beckoned my hand to go. I'm driving. And then he came over to the next lane. So I moved next lane, again, other lane, and I beckoned my hand, go, go. 
I'm riding, you know, at that time, I'm slow down, go, go, you know, go ahead. I'm, he got another lane. So we, we were coming up through Perry, Georgia. I think that was the excitement on my part, the excitement because uh, at that time, 100, about 140 years ago, I guess it was more, uh, my people were free from slavery in Perry, Georgia. So as I was coming through Perry, I was like, whoa, you know, coming out of Florida, coming through Perry, this is where the whole thing started. Now here I'm back 140, 135 years later, whatever it was, uh, riding an iron mule at top speed. Yeah, I guess I was very excited about that. And uh, so when I finally stopped the, the bike, the police would come up to me and asked me, why did I keep going? I said, well, you, you, I thought you wanted to go by me. And he looked at me as if I was telling him a joke. I said, well, no, officer, um, you have a blue light. He said, uh, yes. I said, well, as you, you know, you see my, my place in Jersey. I said, well, where I come from, the emergency light is red, not blue. You know, like tow trucks have blue lights and we normally move over and let them go. And he looked at me, and as I looked at him, he, oh, you know. And so we got the ticket, I got the ticket, and everything was all right, I had to sign for the ticket. But I'm just saying as this here, I tell you that story to say that there's a lot of work that we have to do. Uh, a level of communications throughout the nation need to step up. We need to become more communicative with each other, because other than that, you don't know. So I, I would like to end with this here that, again, I want to say this here, reiterate this, that George Zimmerman is not law enforcement. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, God bless the United States of America. Good night.